Hello, and welcome back to Ask a Newsworker. Today we're going to do a bit of a book review of sorts. I'm going to offer a short, concise book review of a book I read recently that deals with the news, that deals with reporting in particular. The book is called Reporter by Seymour Hirsch. Seymour Hirsch is a longtime American investigative reporter. He broke a lot of the major stories of the 20th century, including the My Lai Massacre that took place in Vietnam, in which American military members killed many Vietnamese civilians. It became a big scandal, among other things of the era. He also reported on Watergate. He reported on Henry Kissinger and his activities. He reported on the JFK administration and things that happened behind the scenes there. He reported on intelligence abuses involving the CIA and perhaps the FBI, but I believe it was mostly the CIA. Very storied career, a very respected person within American journalism. Controversial to some degree because a lot of his reporting would challenge the official narrative at the time, and he gets into it in the book. But remember that that's actually what good reporting is supposed to do. It's supposed to challenge existing narratives with evidence, with documents, with real proof, and get to the heart of what's really going on. And that's a big part of what Seymour Hirsch did across his career. He's still alive. I believe he's in his 80s now, and it's part of why he wrote the memoir he did. Still active in journalism to some degree from what I understand, but probably not as much as he used to be. He's won a Pulitzer Prize. He won Polk Awards for various reporting pieces he's done over the years. You can look into the rest of his history on Wikipedia and elsewhere if you're curious, see interviews with him on YouTube. But I wanted to read the book because I was very interested to hear his perspective as a longtime investigative reporter I don't know if everyone out there is aware of the difference, perhaps, between an investigative reporter and a reporter just on its own. The word reporter is used in many different situations, many different contexts. I would say it's used very loosely in some cases. What Seymour Hirsch was, once again, was an investigative reporter and a person who would specifically investigate, that's why it's called that, specific leads, specific contacts, documents. He was trying to get to the bottom of something, and sometimes his pieces, his projects, his works, his pieces of journalism would take a long time to come to fruition. He'd have to talk to a lot of different people in a lot of different places, a lot of dead ends, a lot of doors slammed in his face, a lot of people hanging up, searching for documents, searching for contacts, just trying to understand searching for context in, in, in text and documents, trying to understand what really happened with something it requires a lot of work, a lot of patience, a lot of diligence. It's not something quick. It's not something to be done by the end of the day necessarily, although sometimes that can happen. So I'm not sure how many people in the general public understand that investigative reporting is a very specific type of reporting that I don't know is as practiced these days in 2023 when I'm recording this as maybe in Seymour Hersh's day, that's part of the issue, and he talks about that in his book. He uncovered a lot of serious wrongdoing, a lot of serious malfeasance, and part of how he did that was, again, through the dogged, determined pursuit of documents of contacts, trying to find out what really happened, trying to find information that some people didn't want to come to light that was factual, that was based on real things. The My Lai Massacre was a, a real massacre that may not have come to the American public's attention had it not been for him and his reporting. He was contacted by someone who knew something had happened and seemed to want him to write about it, and he had to then pursue leads and contacts from there. So investigative reporting, a very specific type of reporting that is different from, say, just going to a press conference at the White House that day and writing down what the president said or what the president's spokesperson said to take an American example. Investigative reporting is a lot deeper, richer. It ends up usually revealing something more important than what a spokesperson said that given day or an elected official said that given day. Um, unfortunately, in this day and age, there's a lot of press conference journalism, which is just people showing up to the press conference and taking official account, you know, giving 
some hard questions here and there, grilling politicians and spokespeople here and there. But what Seymour Hirsch was doing was going around all that and trying to find the real story, the, the thing that was not going to be presented at the press conference. And as I've said in other videos, there is a lot of information, a lot of data, a lot of truth that will not be presented at a press conference and requires a person, a person like Seymour Hirsch to go and find. So that's an important thing to understand about him. I'm going to try to keep this video again short, as I'm always doing. Um, the book was very interesting in many ways. He goes into detail about how he got the stories he got uh, for a full rundown of what that's like. I recommend you read the book itself. One thing that's interesting to me about the book in terms of this channel, in terms of media and news work and things like that, is that he has multiple stories in the book of certain news outlets and editors turning him down despite the fact that he had very good information, had reliable sources in many cases. He had a lot to say. He had, he had something important on his hands. There were certain media organizations and editors who simply didn't want to touch it, including ones like the New York Times, for example, that just didn't want to take him up on some of his stories, some of his leads. They knew his reputation. He'd already established himself by that point, but they were very afraid to take him on in some cases. They were worried about maybe the, the legal ramifications, the legal consequences of some of what he was doing. Um, he had to check a lot of his journalism before publishing with a lawyer. That's pretty standard because, again, if you're reporting on anything of import, if you're reporting on anything serious at all, you're going to be bothering powerful people either in government or in business, and they probably will try to sue you, especially in America. So he had to do that a lot. There are many cases where the New York Times or other outlets just simply didn't want to deal with it. Even something as vaunted as the New York Times didn't want to deal with it. And there were some cases where they didn't want to deal with it because they had friends in high places. Someone at the Times was cozy with someone in a particular department of government or in a particular corporation. This is something that's not talked about a lot, that the people at the highest echelons of the media are often very friendly with the people at the very highest echelons of political power, of business power, and stories can get squashed or frustrated or delayed because of that. One thing that Hirsch reported on in the 70s was the corporation Gulf and Western, which doesn't exist anymore from what I understand. It's been broken up into various smaller companies. But at the time, it was very powerful, controlled a lot of commerce, was based in Manhattan. And he did a story on them based on how they were evading taxes, how they were evading certain rules and regulations that directly applied to them. And what was interesting to me is that from what I could tell from the book and his account, the reporting on the private company, Gulf and Western, the private corporation, was riskier, more complicated, and more maddening. There was more interference, basically, from the corporation than when he was reporting on the government. So it really makes you think who is really <laughs> powerful in the end if it's harder to report on a private company or corporation than it is on the actual U.S. government, if there's just more legal com com complications, more threats, more issues, who's really running the show in that case? I'll let you think about that a little more. So that was something that was highlighted, and he, he talks about many other situations like that. Again, it's, it's a 400-page book or so, and I really recommend anyone who's interested in reading the life of a serious, dedicated, investigative reporter to actually check it out. Um, there was many sad elements of the book uh, from a media perspective in the sense that he talks about how some of his big scoops, including Abu Ghraib, he was instrumental in reporting on the abuses of at the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq during the Iraq war in the 2000s, that a lot of the reporting certainly got play, it got attention, play is a media term for attention basically and people talking about a particular story. But he, he says multiple times throughout his book that a lot of people did not really seem to care as much as he was hoping about the things he was reporting on, that it didn't really foster maybe as much change. I get the impression that he was hoping. And that's another reality is that there's a lot of very big, important stories out there that really don't get the attention they should, while other things like, you know, someone being trapped in an air balloon or something will lead the news for like several days straight or something. I mean, that's just one example. There was actually something like that a number of years ago. So again, I'm trying to keep the video short, but it's a good book. If you're interested in reading about what it's like to be an actual investigative reporter, what's actually involved in that, not just showing up to the press conference, not just surfing Twitter and making a story out of that, actually 
sifting through documents, meeting officials, trying to find out what's going on, risking your own life in some cases, risking your reputation, risking your happiness to break important stories, to reveal to the world what actually happened in a particular situation, then I definitely recommend you read Reporter by Seymour Hirsch. And let me know what you think if you do read it. Did you find it interesting? Did you find it boring? Do you think he did good work? Do you think he did bad work? What's your opinion of him? I know him better than ever before having read his memoir, but there's still a lot that I don't know because a lot of his most important publishing, his most important reporting was done before I was born. So, Reporter by Seymour Hirsch, I recommend it. And keep watching the channel for more videos with these topics going further in depth into some of the things I've talked about in future videos right here on Ask a Newsworker. Thanks for watching.